Hello guys welcome to my humble YouTube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. What if Hajime discovered other exit of Great Orcus Labyrinth? By Jaga Emo 001. Fanfiction.net just in community forum v more what if Hajime discovered other exit of Great Orcus Labyrinth? By Jaga Emo 001. Chapter 1. Alternative exit two months had passed since the fall occur. Hajime and Yu already cleared the Great Orcus Labyrinth and currently on their way to the surface. They spend their entire month on Oscar's hideout studying, honing their fighting style, and creating artifacts. Hajime found the entire archive of all the knowledge the Liberators possessed, this include the layout of the entire labyrinth. Hidden routes, traps, ores, and all of the teleportation circles locations were present. They also found an exit which can only be activated using the proof they acquired for finishing this dungeon. There's a teleportation circle in the hideout but rather teleporting to some unknown place, they decided to play it safe which required going through the entire labyrinth again and activate the alternative exit located on the floor 101st of this dungeon. On their way to the surface Hajime harvested quite the quantity of raw materials for their entire journey, this include monsters loot such as hides, claws, bones, and teeth. For normal life forms of this world might find it problematic carrying this vast amount of loot by themselves, but for Hajime who owned the most convenient tool ever existed the treasure warehouse, which makes carrying everything a piece of cake. They basically speed run the whole labyrinth thanks to their strength and teleportation circles. Hajime fills up Yu's question with ease on their way to the exit. Yu who had been sealed for 300 years practice with her magic so she can adjust the output of her magic fighting small fry and maximizing the efficiency of her mana rather, she don't really need to do it because she had divinity stone accessories series but of course she didn't want to cause any collateral damage while fighting on the surface. They were currently heading to the next teleportation circle located on the 70th floor of the upper floors. Hajime just let Yu handle all of the monsters of upper floor, only focusing on detecting every entity on their vicinity but suddenly he detected some unwanted creatures ahead. His mood distort quite a bit which Yu immediately noticed, she's about to question him but not long after she also picks up the presence of this unknown creatures. Putting her guard up on their enemies, though they aren't strong enough to intimidate her but still, their strength is quite different to all they fight in this floor so far. Hajime patted her head and Yu turned her head to look at him but to her surprised he's just smiling at her proud that a partner he had chose were so reliable that he can leave her to have his back to any situation. As far as Yu was concerned she hadn't seen Hajime hadn't raised any hostility against their enemies so this was new for her. Once they reached the end of the hall they found lots of adventurers, Hajime's classmate to be exact. Hajime already guessed that the presence he detected earlier belonged to his classmates, currently camping out besides the teleportation circle taking a break. Several night were on patrol guarding the heroes against monsters surprise attacks, but it seems like none of them were able to detect Hajime and Yu as expected, this just show the result of their training were paying off, because their hide presence on the completely different level. The hero party consist of Amanogawa Kuki, Yegashi Shizuku, Sakagami Ryotaro, Taniguchi Suzu, Nakamura Eri, and Shirasaki Kaori. There's also Nagayama's party and of course Hayama and his peers were also present. Endo Kosuke were also there but he didn't didn't notice him as usual. Amanogawa Kuki is your common anime protag. Strong, handsome, smart, and charismatic. Brown hair, charming facial features with the height of 180 centimeters, his appearance screams perfection without even him trying. Shirasaki Kaori were the most beautiful girl in school. Her waist long black hair, perfect body proportion, and charming beauty captivated every boy on school. They call her goddess not just because of her beauty but also for her personality. Yegashi Shizuku were Kaori's best friend. With her body that looks like a model, alluring aura of a big sister, and her trademark ponytail captivated not just the boys but even girls at school. Her beauty were second to Kaori, Aslo, although she find the title embarrassing, she's also a goddess who would protect everyone. Sakagami Ryutaro is Kuki's best friend. His two meters height, bulky muscles, and bear-like figures will without a doubt intimidate anyone. He's hard worker who doesn't think too much that's why most of their classmate calls him a muscle brain. Taniguchi Suzu were the class mood maker. 
standing 167 centimeters, twin tail hair, and childlike appearance makes her look like a harmless animal. Although she looks like this most of the time she's just messing around acting like a perverted old man and drag her best friend to every troublesome situation. Nakamura Eri were Suzu's best friend. She has a short hair, wears glasses, and pretty much had plain attributes. Although she's just like this but for better or worse she gets along with everyone else in class. Daisuke Hayama were Hajime's bully. He has brown hair, brown eyes, and a personality that would invite anyone to punch him in the face. Hajime was sure they should have noticed his presence already but it seems he has overestimated them. For some reason Koari became uneasy, she keeps looking around looking for something she didn't know herself. Shizuku who were right next to her discussing their plans with the rest of the party noticed Kaori's behavior, she was about to ask a question but interrupted by a familiar voice that suddenly rang out. Kaori? Is there some? Looks like all of you are having fun aren't you? They all look at the same the direction putting their guard up for the sudden appearance for this unknown person. They all know that no habitants of this world in history were able to go beyond 45th floor of the Oscar's Great Labyrinth so they should be the only people present on this floor, but for an unknown reason this person were here at the 70th floor that no one but themselves were able to reach. It's only natural putting their guard up but Kaori's eyes widened in surprise and for some reason her heart that should be cold since his demise started to pound rapidly. Warm feelings flow through her entire body, tears were gathering to the corner of her eyes, this feeling that she can't describe feels the same when she saw him the first time kneeling in front of those delinquents, in her eyes thousands of emotions were currently residing and she can't do anything except shouting his name, the boy she were looking for this entire time. Hajime Kun. All of them turned to look at Kaori dumbfounded, and back to Hajime. Yo. Long time no see, are all of you doing well? In his light-hearted reply, they were all shaken. None of them can't even process what to do in this situation, their mouth open and close without words coming out, some of them doubt Kaori and says, huh, that's him, no waaaay, or, it's gotta be a joke right, right. Who can blame them? The person in front of them right now were a completely different person. This person with white hair, eye patch, and a weird looking arm were a far cry from Hajime. He's wearing all black and his eyes look sharp like a hawk, his body structure and height were completely different from the Hajime they knew. They can't really tell if this person really were him, but his facial figure resembles him so they can't really deny Kaori's outburst. The fact that he's emitting a dangerous aura makes her claim hard to believe too, so none of them drop their guard down. They doubt Hajime could explore this floor on his own with his strength, there were also a possibility that this were a monster in disguise or one of the labyrinth's trap. Meld already teach them lots of stuffs so they can't even remove their gaze on him for even a second. Kaori was about to run to him but Shizuku stop her and ask Hajime a question. Is that really you? Nagumo-kun? Hajime just sigh and reply. Do I look like someone else? Well yeah I really do look like someone else but it's me. Nagumo Hajime. I'm alive. Meld decided to butt in on the conversation. Still on guard. Do you have something to prove your identity? Eh, is that really necessary? Hajime just shrugged his shoulders while muttering, well, can't be helped huh? He flicked his status plate to meld which he catch perfectly. The other students also tried to take a peek of his status plate to see if he's really him, but none of them expected to see his status plate to look like this, their eyes widened in shock, meld were also on the same state, for now he tried to wipe the plate with his sleeve and wrap the surface to check if it weren't broken. Hajime found their reaction quite weird. He tilted his head on confusion and was about to ask a question but realized his fatal mistake. He forgotten to hide his stats and skills, and now they are full of doubts whether he really were Hajime. What's wrong with this status plate? Your stats is on five digits, and you have dozens of skills and your level only shows, on it. Hajime laugh awkwardly while scratching his head. Hajime's appearance seems calm but he's actually panicking and he mentally berated himself for his carelessness. Yu chuckles a bit while looking warmly at Hajime's current state. It's pretty rare to see him like this after all. Chapter 2. Q&A, uh. It broke. When I wake up it's already like that glitchy. I don't really get it too. Hajime's lies seems to be effective because some of them breath a sigh of relief, but others still has doubts especially meld, he'd never heard of a status plate broken like this, for now he put that aside and just accept that he really were Hajime. If the stats here were true, He's like a monster already that can destroy the kingdom with one hand. 
Kondo, Saito, and Nakano are already laughing for his sorry state, but for some reason Hayama is sweating profusely and seems to be panicking. Discovering Hajime's survival seems like a nightmare for him. For now they confirm that his word were true and he really were Nagumo Hajime. Most of them were grateful to see him alive, they didn't dislike him that they want him dead. Something lifted up from their chest and they felt relieved to see one of their classmates still alive. Shizuki let go of Kaori and she sprinted to him as fast as possible tears on her eyes, but this time Hajime's beloved vampire Prisus stopped her. She stepped between Kaori and Hajime, and spread his arms wide. You already guessed that these people were Hajime's classmate and she had already seen through Kaori's feelings for Hajime. You already know it based on Hajime's story so she can't let her guard down here against her rival. All of them stare at you for a few seconds, none of them were able to sense her until now. Blonde hair, red eyes, and a pale skin, with the same height as Suzu, everyone without exception were captivated. Her unparalleled beauty that can only be described as divine, despite her looks that seems to be childish, the aura she emitted were so mature and alluring, it attracted everyone's attention. Kaori returned to her senses, her cheeks red, she seems also smitten by Yu's beauty even they were both females, she questioned this girl that seems to be quite close to Hajime. Who are you? Why are you getting in my way? Closing square bracket. Kaori tried to get past you but she still stopped her. Who are you to Hajime anyway? Closing square bracket. Wah. Kaori grew impatient while you were just giving her a deadpan stare. Hajime was staring at Kaori with cold eyes and sigh. He walked forward and patted you on her head. She turns to him and Hajime just smile warmly. Already knew what he was going to say she reluctantly put her hands down and pout. Hajime finds that reaction cute. Their little world they created attracts everyone's attention some of the boys click their tongue in annoyance and some of the girls just glare at him, in just a few actions they were able to guess their relationship already. Kaori were still confused about their relationship but her maiden heart tells her, that you is her enemy. Hajime take a glance at the rest of his classmates and turn to Kaori still wearing his emotionless eyes. What is it Shirasaki? Closing square bracket. No honorifics. Girl's glares intensifies. Kaori flinched a little in his cold eyes and annoyed tone. I just want to ask about your situation. How are you doing? What happened after your fall? Why are you look like this? And how did you survive? Closing square bracket. Kaori's emotions is overflowing but Yu's actions put a stop to it. She calm her pounding heart and the ask the questions what everyone wants to ask themselves. Hajime just breathed a sigh and answer nonchalantly. Well as you can see I am still alive, thank you for asking and I just did what I can to survive, that's all there is to it. Hajime's nonchalant answer annoyed everyone especially Shizuku and Kuki. Hoi. Nagumo. Kaori is just concern you know. Try to answer her properly. Closing square bracket. Nagumo-kun, I can't just let you do that you know. She's my best friend after all. Closing square bracket. Kaori just looked down and smiled sadly, she thought she caused trouble by asking some sensitive questions. Kuki grind his teeth in frustration and Ryutaro just pat him to the shoulder to calm him down, Suzu berated Hajime for his attitude toward Kaori, next to her is Shizuku massaging her temple in annoyance. For now Meld and the other knights finished confirming his status plate, they haven't heard of status plate broke like that so they still have doubts and returned Hajime's status plate to him. I am glad that you're still alive Shonen, thank you for what you did for us last time, and I'm sorry I can't save you back then, really I'm sorry. Closing square bracket. Meld bowed his head along with his subordinates. Hajime's classmate only just remembered now what he did back then, they also bow their heads to him with slight guilt harboring inside their heart, but of course Kuki, and Ryutaro didn't, they can't realize the weight of Hajime's sacrifice back then, same goes for Hayama and his gang, they didn't like him on the first place after all. Hajime just dismissed all of them, smiling awkwardly while waving his hand saying. Ooh, don't worry about it. Anyways what are you guys doing down here anyway? Closing square bracket. Hajime changed the topic to remove the solemn atmosphere. He already know the answer to his own question though. Actually we're on training right now for the incoming war against demons. Improving stats and getting new skills is also important but practical training is a must, so I am teaching the children's the proper way of fighting and making sure they are ready to any kind of situation. Closing square bracket. 
On Meld's explanation, Kuki and the others' faces turned resolute, it seems the training has a lot of progress and they are pretty confident for their skills. They look like bragging to Hajime's eyes but he decides to ignore it and turn to Meld. Hajime saw how proud Meld were, he looks like a father watching his kids grow faster than he thought. By the way, where are you going right now? I'm quite impressed you managed to escape and find your way through here. There's a lot of stronger monster here compared to upper floors you know. Closing square bracket. Actually I already map out the area and already discovered this magic circle, but lots of monsters are lurking here so I decided to rest halfway through. I'm on the way to surface though so I'm here to use that magic circle to skip floors. Closing square bracket. Some of the students laugh, thinking that he's incompetent as always. Shizuku and Kaori looks at him in sympathy imagining everything he must have gone through. Actually Hajime and you already wipe out most of the monsters here on their way to the magic circle, but they decided to take a rest cause you spends lots of mana for her experiments. For now we're on break since we just finished exploring the previous floor and decided to camp out here cause there's a few monsters nearby, wanna join us? Since you're alive I'm thinking of returning to kingdom for now and report it to his majesty about your miraculous survival. I'm sure your teacher and your other classmate would be happy to see you. Closing square bracket. Hajime weigh his options. He already know the locations of the other labyrinth and one of them are located in High Lai Kingdom, more specifically on the Divine Mountain, but he knows that the kingdom would try to control him to join their war against demons. He really don't care what happens to this world so he's not gonna join them and try to avoid becoming a pawn of their gods. He wants to focus on his goal which is, find a way to go back home to Japan. Meld tilted his head wondering why Hajime was having a second thought, he's already convinced that he would return to the kingdom along with his classmates, but he smiles happily after his reply. Yeah. Let's return to the kingdom for now I also have something to do there. Glad to have you back. We're having lunch right now. Wanna join us? Sure. It's been a while since I had real food and I'm starving. All of them tilted their head on Hajime's statements and was about to ask a questions but, Hajime along with you walk past them, tapped his foot twice and suddenly two chairs pop up besides the campfire, he breathed tiredly and sit down comfortably ignoring everyone else, you walk toward him and sit on his lap like it's only natural, she wriggled her butt a bit and when she found her spot, she lean on Hajime and entrust herself to him entirely. The students already guess what kind of relationship they have and glared at them in annoyance for flirting in front everyone. Kaori's lightless eyes stares at them lacking the warm feelings that always present and her demon stand were visible to everyone that they unconsciously ready their weapon. Shizuku stared at her best friend worriedly like a mother hen, but for now she pat her on her shoulder and smile warmly. Kaori returned to her senses and she dejectedly walked back to the campfire. Kaori sit next to Hajime and served him food she cooked herself. Looking at Hajime smiling happily while eating her food also brings smile on her face. Yu pouted when she saw Hajime enjoying his meal. For now she gather her resolve to practice cooking too, for him in the future. After the meal, Meld discussed their plans to everyone. All of them were listening, or so it seems. Most of the boys were staring at Yu on Hajime's lap, they can't believe that such a beauty exist but when they saw how she flirt with Hajime, they can't help but glared at him. Some students were staring at Hajime, they still can't believe that the person in front of them was really him but for now they try to examine him. Looking at Hajime's body they could only imagine how hard he trained to acquire his well-built body. Meld noticed that most of them so he coughed loudly to attract everyone's attention. Seems like only Hajime were the only listening to me. Listen carefully, this is important after all. I know most of you are curious to Hajime but bear it for. You know what I'm curious too. So Shonen can you tell us what happened down here? Suddenly Hajime became the center of attention and everyone were looking at him expecting some exciting answers. Hajime just sigh and give in. He knows that they would pester him eventually. Down there were a lot of strong monsters. If even one of those monsters were able to escape this labyrinth, they would terrorize a small town like Harad. There's also lots of ores that you can't find here which has interesting functionality. The traps were also quite deadly. You know there is a floor which is filled with tar-like substance that is highly flammable good thing I made it out there, it's quite a hassle after all. The students and the knights were dumbfounded. They can't believe this guy with a non-combat job cleared those floors. They all thought Hajime would just hide himself but it seems that's not the case. 
The knights stared at him with amazement and for the students, some had come to admire him for his braveness and some were pretty enthusiastic exploring this floor, they thought Hajime were exaggerating the monsters down there, if he could do it, it will be a piece of cake for them. Oh. Seems like we can reach 100th in no time. I'm getting pumped up, Kuki stated. Yeah. Man this will be much easier than I thought, Ryotaro replied. Even though you have gone through a lot it seems you're pretty fine huh? Your equipment's too seems top class, did you make it yourself? Meld asked. Huh. Oh this. You made it for me it's pretty cool right? Hajime puffed up her chest proudly, looking smug. Kaori looks at her in frustration. Then how come your hair is white now? Don't tell me you dyed it yourself. Dasa, Kondo scoffed. Ha ha ha. And he's wearing an eye patch too. Don't tell us you're trying seal your powers within. Nakano followed up. And look at that arm dude. Ah ha ha ha. Does your left arm have the power to destroy worlds? No matter where you go Nagumo you're still a gross otaku. Saito said while laughing. Most of the student too started laughing. They didn't really mind it at first. But when someone pointed it out, Hajime were really look ridiculous, they didn't bother trying hide their laughter. Shizuku glared at Trio but doesn't say anything, looking at her own friends she seems disappointed. Kuki and Ryotaro were also laughing but not pretty obvious like the rest, Kaori were just staring at Hajime, it seems like she thought he wouldn't get bothered by it cause he's already gets used to it hearing everyone's mocking him. Kaori's emotions were all over the place, for now so she can't find herself to get angry. Shizuku just massaged her temple and was about to apologize to Hajime but she noticed something was lacking, Hajime's troubled smile he always wore while talking to them weren't present. What she saw were just his expressionless face and chilling gaze. Goosebumps rose without her noticing, she can't help but cower in fear looking at his emotionless mask. Nah. I didn't have the power to destroy worlds yet. But, I can still kill all of you, right here, right now. Hajime released a tiny bit of pressure to state that what he says weren't a joke. You on his lap were just looking at everyone with cold eyes, the fact that her hair were fluttering proves that she's exerting mana enough to release one powerful advanced spell. In truth Yu wants to annihilate everyone present here, she won't forgive anyone for mocking his beloved, but her consideration toward Hajime allowed her to resist unleashing her wrath. The laughing students stop immediately, they unconsciously took a step back. Sweat rolled down from their forehead and everyone gulped nervously. Kaori was an exception she just sit there and stared at him in confusion. Everyone stared at Hajime full of wariness, they put their shaking hands on their weapons battle ready, they can't believe this kind of pressure were coming from him, of all people. Haha. <laughs> it's just a joke, I bet some of you peed on your pants. Hajime laughed wholeheartedly. Yu on his lap returned to her previous state. None were able to talk or even meet Hajime's eyes. The fact that he hasn't done this before makes him much scarier. Hajime chuckles a bit and divert the topic away from him. Enough about me. What about all of you? What are all of you doing up until now? What are the current events on surface? And why just only you guys are present? Where are the rest? Everyone returned to their seats and wiped their sweat. Hayama and his gang seems angry for cowering from Hajime, they would definitely teach him some lesson when no one were present. Shizuku just sighed and answer all of his questions. W well as you can see we're fine, the rest of the class are on the kingdom right now and they didn't join because of that accident. They are traumatized you know, so they decided to not join the war and stay safe instead. Nothing much really happens on the surface that worth to be mentioned, we only trained in ooh. I just remember we met with the emperor, he's pretty strong considering he's from this world. Hajime nodded. So all of you are still alive huh? Wait a sec. What do you mean by accident? Huh. OWW. What I mean was that accident where a stray spell hit you and fall down to the bottom of the dungeon. Who? That was an accident huh? Closing square bracket. Hajime shoot Hayama a glacé with a knowing grin. He instantly went pale. Looking at Hajime's expression, it's pretty obvious that he knows something. Sweating profusely he decided to butt in but Hajime cut him off. Well it's not like I care really if that's what you believe. Well enough resting. Should we go now meld san. Closing square bracket. Hajime isn't interested on revenge after all, but if Hayama wants to be his enemy, he would blow his head off without hesitation. Yeah we should hurry up before nightfall. Okay kids tomorrow morning we will depart and head to the kingdom. 
We need to have a discussion with Hajime by King and Pope's attendance. We might discover something that might help us clear until 100th floor. That's all. Now get ready everyone, we're leaving. Closing square bracket. Everyone move quickly grabbing their belongings, Hajime carry you in princess style, she seems tired from listening to everyone's story. Hajime tap his foot twice, instantly the chair he transmuted earlier, he already removed the other one crumbled. Everyone stared at him in amazement for casting spells without magic circle and far faster than before. They also notice how the color of his mana turned crimson, Kaori seems captivated by its beauty. Meld step in the magic circle and activated it, instantly teleporting everyone to 20th floor. 